Welcome to Ground Control. Uh, I thought I would do a first look at this latest micro brushless sub 250 gram RC aircraft. I think this is going to be another excellent option in my class to find very good flying micro brushless planes as opposed to brush motor and gearbox planes and this has got a very good price on it I think I checked this morning and I think the price at the Chinese warehouse was $129.99 for the plug and fly version this is a plug and fly plug, plug and fly plane easy for me to say and I think at the US warehouse it was around $113.99 for the plug and fly version. So I think for what you get, it's a very inexpensive aircraft. Okay, so first I want to give you the specs and then I'll go over a couple of things on the assembly, the size of battery that I'm going to be using with this. The only the only downside I see to this is it's going to be pretty limiting on the size of the battery that you can use with it. But we'll go over that too. Okay, so I weighed the airframe without the battery in it, the completely, completely assembled airframe. I put a uh, radio link BIME A gyro in it. If you guys have watched my review of the radio link plug and play BIME A gyro, you know I really like those gyros. And as I stated in that video, I was going to order a couple more of them, and so I did. And so I've got one of them in here. I'm using it with a W Fly. S bus receiver. I will put a link to that in the show notes too because it's a fairly inexpensive diversity. It's got the long antennas on it. Uh, S bus receiver. I've, I've used this type of receiver before. I really like it. It's extremely small. It's extremely lightweight. So I will have a link in there to the BIME A gyro and also to the S bus receiver for you guys. Alright, so um, the all up weight with the gyro receiver, everything completely ready to go except for the lipo, is 155 grams. Pretty darn light. Okay, so uh, the lipo that I'm using is a Nanotech 3S 950 milliamp hour 25C lipo. So a 25C 950 milliamp hour. LiPo should be able to provide me with 23.75 amps sustained. Okay, and the dimensions on that LiPo, because you, you know, it's about as large a LiPo as I would want to fit in it. 72 millimeters by 25 millimeters by 21 millimeters. I will have a link to that LiPo in the show notes as well. The only downside to that LiPo. And I don't understand why they put JST connectors on LiPos that could supply that many amps. But they did, so I had to convert it from a JST connector to an XT30 connector because the ESC comes with an XT30 connector. So just be aware of that. I do have another LiPo in there that's about the same size and about the same way. It has a higher C rating. I think it's an 850 milliamp hour and 7950 milliamp hour and it comes with an XT30 connector so I've got a link to that in the show notes as well. So my all up weight with that lipo which weighs 66 grams is 221 grams all up weight. So to stay under the 250 gram weight limit in the US for the FAA to where you don't have to put a registration number on it register it with the FAA, you still have 29 grams to work with if you want to put an FPV camera on it because it's also designed for FPV. So that gives you plenty of weight for a micro all-in-one FPV camera or a micro um, video transmitter and high quality camera to put on it. I don't think you'll have any problem being able to do that and stay below the 250 grams. So another excellent option for this. I did charge the battery fully. I did put it on a load meter. I was surprised at how few amps it was pulling on a 3S LiPo. These motors are Ishin branded uh, 1105 5000 kV motors I think. 
let me see here, yeah, 1105, 5000 kV motors. They're spinning a three blade 3016 prop. So I figured with both motors pulling at the same time that I was going to be hitting around 20 amps. It has two, it has a single board that has two 10 amp brushless speed controllers on it and a 5 volt back. So <coughs> I really thought that each one of these motors was going to be pulling close to 10 amps. But I went full throttle with a fully charged LiPo. It was pulling 12.7 amps between the two motors. That's pretty efficient at 100% throttle. With 50% throttle, it was only pulling 4.2 amps. So I don't think these motors and these props are going to be looking at the difference in the amp draw from 100% to 50%. I don't think that those motors are going to be as efficient at 50% throttle as they are as 100% throttle. That's just, just looking at the difference in the amount of amp draw with all the motors and props that I've tested in the past, that tells me that at 50% throttle they're not going to be as efficient. But still, 4.2 amps at 50% throttle. Okay, so before I put it on the load meter with the fully charged LiPo, after I got it completely assembled, and I, I can never wait to do this just to see how much power something has. So I pulled out my LiPo, which had been at storage voltage for a long time, and so I checked the voltage on the cells before I put it in the plane to test it. And it was at, each one of the cells was at 3.7 volts, so it dropped off a little bit from the storage level. So I put that battery in there, that's basically what, 11.4 11 11 volts in the pack. I put it in there, ran it up to full throttle, and the plane was going to pull out of my hand going completely vertical. That's with less than half a charge on the light bulb. So I think this plane is going to have a lot of power for its size. I mean, if it's pulling out of my hand vertical when the LiPo is at 11.4 volts, I can't wait to see what kind of vertical it has with the fully charged 3S LiPo. And I'm definitely going to do that. So, All right, so let me go over the rest of the specs because this is just our first look at it. But um, it's called the Flying Fish. It's a W650. It has a 650 millimeter wingspan, and I love these micro planes that have at least a 24 inch wingspan and are under 250 grams. They just all of those in that category just to see they seem to fly like much larger planes. They seem to be very stable, they seem to have really good performance, and they seem to be very efficient. So, I think for a micro plane, I think that minimum 24 inch wingspan. Is, is a sweet spot for these micro planes for that way. So that's 25, 650 millimeters is 25.6 inches in wingspan. <coughs> All right, the length is 570 millimeters, which is 22.4 inches. It's made out of EPP foam, you know, I love my EPP foam, right? It's the most durable stuff I've seen yet. All right, as I stated, the motors are 1105, 5000 kV. I think everything is rated for 2S to 4S, but I think it's going to be a monster on 3S. 13, 16, three blade props. Okay, the recommended LiPo is a 3S 750 milliamp hour LiPo. I didn't have anything that small or around that size. I, I've got I've got 3S LiPo smaller than that, but I didn't have anything that was around that size that was going to fit inside this fuselage. I, I'm lucky that I had that form factor of lipos that I had from a long time ago. So I'm going to be using some old 800 milliamp hour um, 25C lipos that are about the same size as that 950. Um, the difference in weight between the two is only like two or three grams. So I think those 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 lipos are going to work out great. So I have five lipos that are that will work fine with this plane. Um, it has four 4.3 gram, and th these are listed as digital servos. Yeah, so on the aileron servos, it actually specifies digital. So it's got four 4.3 gram digital servos. So it doesn't look like they skimped on the size of the servos for the size of plane that it is. You know, you've got a 4.3 gram servo moving one aileron each. An elevator and a rudder. Um, that should have 
plenty of torque without even, you know, breaking a sweat. And they're digital. And you know how I like, I like my digital servos. Okay, so the difference between the plug and fly version and the plug and fly FPV version. Okay, so you, you get the aircraft. Uh, the only thing that you have to assemble is the main wing and the horizontal stabilizer. You have two white nylon screws that hold the main wing on. You have this single black nylon screw that holds the horizontal stabilizer on. And if I remember correctly, all the linkage was already run through the linkage stops, but you had to run the linkage through the horizontal um, stabilizer for the elevator because you have to attach that. So the assembly was very straightforward, piece of cake. So it comes with the plane, minimal assembly. You get the Atom RC Exceed 2-in-1 brushless 10 amp ESC. So I think it has two dual 10 amp ESCs on it. And it has a built-in 5 volt back. It doesn't say how many amps it provides. And the input it says is 2 to 4 S. It comes with the two 1105 5000 kV motors, four 4.3 gram digital servos are already installed. The motors are already installed. You do have to install the props. And it comes with four 3016 three blade propellers. So you get an extra set of props with it. I wish all manufacturers did that. You know, I've gotten plug and fly aircraft and ready to fly aircraft work with a single motor that didn't even come with a spare prop. So I like the fact that they have, they've got T-mount motors, standard T-mount motors. So if any T-mount prop will work with them. It's not a proprietary prop. And it comes with a spare set of props. So I think that's fantastic. They, really, they didn't skimp on anything. Okay, and then the, the, the FPV plug and fly version also comes with the Atom RC TX500 uh, video transmitter, a Foxeer Razor Nano 1200 TV line 14 millimeter cam, and one 5.8 gram antenna. Now, underneath this little canopy here, this little, this little canopy right here where it has this little air inlet, that just friction fits on top of the wing and underneath that you've got four nylon risers, four threaded nylon risers. So I assume that is where the BTX would be mounted if you were getting the the uh, FPV plug and fly version. I'm, not, you know, since this is just a plug and fly version I'm not going to put a video transmitter in it. I have my SBUS receiver mounted under there and uh, I just have my antennas brought up to the back. So. Uh, on the configuration, there was one of the servo control arms that I had to remove and, and reposition. It was pretty far off center. So I got that as close to center as I could and then adjusted my ailerons. Now, in my RC manufacturer wish list that I recently published, I stated that I wish that all these micro planes would come with those plastic clevises with the threaded control rods to make it easy to do mechanical adjustment on your trim. Okay, but that's actually my second choice. I didn't, I didn't think about it at the time. But they've got linkage stops on all the control horns, every one of them. And linkage stops are the absolute easiest, quickest way to make adjustments to your mechanical linkage. So my first choice would be to have these linkage stops on all the control horns. Um, my second choice would be to have those plastic clevises with the threaded rods because this makes it really fast and really simple to make your um, adjustments. Now I love, you know, you guys know that in that video I also stated I love these bolt together planes. If I would have received this early in the day, and I didn't, I received it late in the day. If I had received this early in the day, I could have had this plane assembled, had the gyro and the receiver programmed into the transmitter, and I'd have been able to throw it in the air the same day I got it. Which is why I love these bolt-together planes. No gluing. A couple of the larger plug-and-fly planes that I have received lately were actually plug-and-fly kits. 
there was a lot of assembly and you had to solder components together. You didn't have you don't have to do that with any of these. Now on the single board that they have mounted underneath the wing that that contains the two brushless speed controllers and the voltage regulator. It has a uh, micro connector on one end that you connect to the board and it has a servo connector on the other end that you can connect to your receiver or your flight controller or your gyro. You can't do differential thrust using the cable. The, the, it states in the manual that the signal wires for the two motors are bridged in the connector, but they did provide on the front of the board pads. So if you want to use differential thrust on this with the two motors, you can remove those two signal wires from that cable and solder those onto the two signal pads for the motors and then you can program differential thrust. So we're going to take it out in a stock configuration where there's no differential thrust capability on the motors with the, with the connector that's provided and see, fly it and see if, if, uh, if differential thrust would be required to make it fly better. So I, I'm not saying that I won't do that, but I'm not saying I will do that either. It just depends on how it flies and how it turns and how effective the rudder is without differential thrust on it. So, but that's an option available to you. Okay, so it says that it is a classic mid-low speed FPV glider. And as light as it is with the wingspan it has, I would say it's probably going to have pretty good slow flight capability and it's going to have plenty of power. So let me see, it's designed for sub 250 gram, which it is. It says that the recommended takeoff weight is 250 grams. Max recommended takeoff weight is 280 grams. I'm well below 250 grams as I stated. My all up weight right now is 221 grams without an FPV system in it. I could definitely add a micro FPV system and stay under 250 grams. It says the cruise speed is 12 kilometers per hour, which comes out to 12.4 miles per hour. That's cruise speed. So we'll just have to see how slowly we can, we can fly it and how, how aerobatic it is and how much power it has to pull vertical, but it sure, it sure looked to me like it was going to have plenty of power to pull vertical. Now, the only thing that I saw, you know, they, they, they didn't skip on anything except for one thing, and that's this little cover that goes on the top. It's friction fit. And so I've got a, just a couple of strips of, it's you know, the way I fly, that is not going to stay in there. It's going to fly out. So temporarily I put a couple of strips of packing tape across the front and across the back just to keep it nice and secure in there because I don't want my receiver flying out. I wish what they would have done with this little cover where the VTX goes is put a little tab in the front and a magnet in the back. So when I have time that's exactly what I will be doing. I'll be putting a, a um, tab in the front and a magnet in the back so there's no chance of that coming out and then I won't have to use packing tape to secure it. You do have to apply the decals to it too. And then, you know, once you get it bound up, get your servos all centered up, make your adjustments at the linkage stops to get everything neutral. And uh, there's, there wasn't any guidance I could find on the amount of control service deflection. So I tried not to go very aggressive with it to begin with and I added quite a bit of expo. The fact that the ailerons are way outbound, uh, outboard on the main wing, tells me this thing should have, should be very aerobatic and it should be capable of some very nice snappy axial rolls. So I'm looking very forward to reviewing this. I wanted to mention, this plane was provided to me courtesy of Banggood for Ground Control RC. I want to thank them much for sending this plane. When I sat down and decided that I wanted to put together some reviews of brushless micro aircraft that met all my criteria, this was one of them I had on the list. So they sent me one for review. So I thank them much for that. So I have, after this review is done, I have my eye on one more micro brushless sub 250 gram plane that I may pull the trigger on. 
to do another review that should give you four options for micro brushless planes. Anyway, so this is our first look at it. It is ready to throw into the air, except I'm going to see if I can put a landing gear on mine so I don't tear it up landing. All right, so landing gear on this one, hopefully before I launch it the first time. And um, stay tuned. Within the week, I will try to have the first flight video of this posted. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the air.